Britain needs to create a more diverse and sustainable economy and break free of its addiction to easy money. From the city of London. Step one. Get out of the EU! The EU strangles the nation state using a straitjacket of bureaucracy. The larger the juggernaut, the harder it is to change direction. This makes any radical change damn near impossible. Just like fresh produce, laws are best when sourced locally. Laws should be created closer to those people who must obey those laws. When an elite few make blanket rules for a large body of people, this makes it extremely difficult to cater for differences. Fixing the UK is going to require radical change, so we're going to have to move fast. The next thing we can do is get rid of income tax and VAT altogether. That's right. I said, do away with income tax and VAT altogether. All we have to do is take money printing powers away from the central banks and allow government to directly print the cost of running the country. The budget could be capped to a percentage of GDP and pegged to inflation. This would do away with the need for tax avoidance, evasion, and sneaky offshore schemes. We could do away with most accountants and lawyers. The cost of running the country would be borne fairly by everyone who would bear the exact same effects of inflation. The size of the government would shrink. Imagine how much money and headache we'd save from the mountain of red tape we could eliminate. And speaking of lawyers, let's replace them all together. That's right. I said, replace lawyers all together. With clarificators. Pseudo-intellectuals are annoying the way they take simple ideas and make them sound overly complicated. This is called elitism. <laughs> True intellectuals make complex ideas simple and elegant. This is called communication. Yeah, yeah. The law is written in a language deliberately designed to confuse, baffle, and mislead the public. So we need a new system. Bravo! Yeah, yeah. Tell us more! Any contract disputes should be judged by a jury of peers from the fields or professions which both parties belong to. If the jury of your peers don't understand the contract, it's automatically null and void. This would force the legal profession to hone their skills at clear communication instead of cloudy obfuscation. This means there'd be no more hoodwinking the public with 1,000-page legal documents presented at the last minute. Why should anyone be expected to follow the rules if they don't know what they are? The next step is to create a land tax. This is not like a property tax that would raise the price of buying homes. But it's a tax on the underlying land. We're talking about all that rural land still held by the descendants of William the Conqueror's mates. The elite will try and tell you. We could not allow everyone to spread out because it would destroy the environment. But the truth is, limiting the land helps promote the idea of scarcity and allows house prices to soar in the crowded urban areas, which, by the way, are an environmental disaster. Politicians love high prices because it makes them look good. It looks like we've got a huge GDP. But this is fake because it's unproductive and does little for the real economy. High property prices cripple small business. Unrealized geniuses spend their lives paying rent. Ouch! And when we get all that extra money from the land tax, and the ability to print our own money. The next step is to implement a universal basic income, which would be a minimum income paid to every citizen. This would cover just the basics in food, clothing, and shelter. A UBI would reduce crime, poverty, and most importantly, stress upon the people. We'd save on police, the courts, jails, and health costs. It'd streamline the welfare system, making it simple to run. No more job centers, bullying advisors, or patronizing back-to-work schemes. The work ethic made sense back in the day when there was a lot of essential and necessary work to be done. But let's face it, computers and the internet are changing all that. Many of our jobs are being replaced by robots and artificial intelligence. So the amount of work actually required to keep the planet running is dwindling. How many of us are working in jobs that are just made up? Stupid jobs that have the sole function of maintaining the illusion that we're actually getting somewhere. Politicians seem obsessed with keeping us all busy, busy, busy. And for what reason? How many cups of coffee can we possibly drink? How much more stuff do we need? 
Prior to the women's liberation movement, which allowed women to join the slave force, I, I mean workforce, we ran the country with just half the workers. So isn't a 40-hour work week just an arbitrary figure? What if the work week was slashed to 35, 30, 25, or even 20 hours a week? This would double the amount of available jobs overnight. It'd give people the time to do what human beings can do much better than robots. Create and innovate. Could the role of the human be upgraded from laborer to creator? Wouldn't the highest possible goal of humankind be to create a world where we could all be artists? Britain needs to lead the way toward a revolution, a creative renaissance. Imagine all that creativity and brain power harnessed to solve all of humanity's problems instead of just serving coffee. And for the final step, we can substantially reduce the size of national government by creating hybrid communities. In Tolstoy's last novel called Resurrection, the main character gifted an entire village to the people that lived there. Though they were to continue to pay rent, the money went straight back to the village itself. This money was used to improve the village for the villagers. Could we do something like this today? Well, let's think about this. If a land tax were to free up a lot of rural land, the cost of that land would drop. A group of people could buy some of that land. They could divide that land into generous plots, people plots, instead of living all squashed together. Any dwellings built by the members remain the private property of the members themselves. But the underlying land belongs to the collective. The collective could get a loan to pay for infrastructure, like roads, electricity, water. The loan can be paid back through rents, which each member pays monthly to the collective. Once the loan is paid off, this rent can continue to be paid by the members and go towards enhancing the collective with schools, hospitals, libraries. The things normally built by government. When they sell the house, the new owner understands they'll be paying a land rent based on the current market value of the property. Those with bigger houses pay more land tax and contribute more to the community. So it's win-win for everybody. Capitalism is great for incentivizing productivity, but after a while, it gets counterproductive. When the game is stacked too far against you, nobody wants to play anymore. But with hybrid communities, we get the benefit of a stimulating and productive capitalism along with a caring socialism. There's no point joining teams and bickering over ideology. Let's just go with what works. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. There's a sweet spot in there. As hybrid communities spread across the UK, the role of the national government will become less and less necessary. Government at a local level allows you to get to know your politicians. Monolithic superstates like the EU are dinosaurs. The future is distributed networks, power decentralized, hybrid communities can govern themselves. In choosing to live in one of these cities, you're also choosing which government you prefer. This will get governments competing with each other to make you happy. When the city of London was bringing in rivers of easy money, but killing off manufacturing and real jobs, people could live with it because it was a reasonable safety net. But the austerity imposed by the 2008 crash was like a rug being pulled out from under the citizens. Homelessness has doubled in the past five years. People are killing themselves over bedroom tax and employment sanctions. Though the richest city in the EU is located in the UK, the UK is also home to 9 out of 10 of the poorest cities. This makes the inequality the highest in Europe. In March of 2018, for the first time ever, crime figures in London are now higher than in New York City. We know that inequality predicts homicide rates better than any other variable. So it's not about poverty, it's about inequality. So is there a future for Britain? Isn't it time she showed her real face to the world? Not cruel Britannia. Cool Britannia! So come on, Britain. Isn't it time you took off that mask and showed your real face? 
The real Britannia. The originality, innovation, and creativity of the British people. I hope you enjoyed watching England's Mask. Please like and subscribe to this channel to hear more music and ideas for fixing the world. And if you really enjoyed it, you can help support my work on my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Megli Chin. Until next time, au revoir!